Hey guys, it is the middle of summer as I'm recording this video for you and we are in the middle of a COVID pandemic and nobody wants to be wearing a cloth mask outside on a hot day. But the reality is in many places, cloth masks have become mandated, which means you need to wear one to protect others when you're outside. So we're gonna dive into the research on cloth masks, particularly what makes the best cloth mask, how helpful are they, and are they really working? We're gonna answer those questions right after this. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Now before we get started into the video on cloth masks, I do want to just talk quickly about the difference between a surgical mask and a cloth mask because in my video on how to wear a surgical mask, I'll put the link up here for you, there's a lot of questions about how these, or a lot of comments about how these do not protect yourself, that they're meant to protect others only. And that's a real big misunderstanding. The surgical mask is, a, is designed to protect both you, the wearer, and those around you. That's a little different from the cloth mask. Now a cloth mask, as we're gonna dissect here today, we're gonna to talk about the efficiency of filtration, and then we're gonna talk about types of material that are better than others. But the filtration is really where the issue is in terms of protecting you. The cloth mask is primarily designed to protect those around you. And I think that's where some of the confusion is coming when we talk about face masks. So I just wanted to put that out there. I wanna go over some of the research with you just to highlight what was found in the earlier years when this research first began. Now the links for these studies will be in the description box below so that you can access them. But here we have a simple respiratory protection evaluation of the filtration performance of cloth masks and common fabric. So this study looked at five different types of materials. They looked at sweaters, t-shirts, towels, scarves, and cloth masks. And they were focused on identifying the filtration capacity of these different materials for particles that were nano-sized particles, including viruses. And these are between 20 and 1,000 nanometers. What we know about the size of COVID-19 is it's approximately 0.125 microns. Now in a micron, there is 1,000 nanometers. So that means the COVID virus is approximately 125 nanometers in size fitting into the study. At the end of the study, what they determined was that the materials used had anywhere between a 40 to a 90% instantaneous penetration, which means as the patient wearing the testing material is being exposed to these potential viruses, that penetrated the mask up to 90% of the time. And what they did find was that materials that were made out of 100% cotton performed better. That leads me to the second study. Now the fun part of this study is that these masks were tested against surgical masks and not wearing a mask. And the participants in this study actually coughed into a box and they sampled that air for five minutes in each of those three scenarios with the cloth mask, the surgical mask, and no mask. And what they found was that both the surgical mask and the cloth mask reduced the number of microbes expelled during coughing. At the end of this study though, they did recognize that the use of a cloth mask would be a last resort when there is no access to surgical masks, but better than no mask. So this next question comes from T Hopkins on the Instagram page where she asks, what is the best material to make your mask out of and what is the best design? Well, from the research, there are two things you need to do with your material or your fabric. One is the light test. So you wanna hold it up to the light and if you can see the light coming through it, you can actually see the light fixture as you can see with the t-shirt and the bandana. That would not be a good material to choose. But if that's all you have, that is better than nothing. The second thing you want to look for is the thread count. So quilters cotton has been repeatedly mentioned in the research and in articles online as a preferred material to make your mask out of because of the tight weave and the high quality of cotton. So the higher the thread count, the better. And of course, once you're wearing it, as soon as it starts to get damp, that reduces the efficiency of your mask and you would want to change it out at that point. Now, of course, wearing a mask is only one of three things that we need to be maintaining. It's really the trifecta, the triangle of things that we need to put in place in order to really reduce our risk of transmitting and catching COVID. Number one is hand hygiene. Number two is social distancing. And number three is wearing a mask. So Grace on YouTube asked, is there a proper way to wear a mask when you're outside exercising? And the answer is yes. 
The proper way to wear your mask is the same as you would indoors when you're not exercising. The concern is about breathability at this point. So if you're using a really thick fabric, you may have a harder time breathing. So you wanna make sure that you can breathe through your fabric while you're exercising. Now, if you live somewhere where masking has not been mandated yet, you might be asking yourself, should I start to wear one? In order to help you make the decision as to whether you should start to wear a mask or not wear a mask in public, we need to look again back to the research. Let's begin with a recent release of a study that is meant to be published in October of this year, but we have the findings already from the CDC. The effectiveness of cloth masks for protection against coronavirus too. Now this study is looking at the use of cloth masks for healthcare providers and for those in the community and focusing on the filtration effectiveness. And generally what they find is that they should not be recommended or mandated for healthcare providers, but that in the community settings, cloth masks may be used to prevent community spread of infections by the sick or the asymptomatically infected patients. Now, they reference a study done in 2015 where they were comparing cloth masks to medical masks. These cloth masks were double-layered cotton masks, and they found that the rates of infections were consistently higher with those who used the cloth mask than those using the medical mask in a healthcare setting. Now, they also examined the filtration ability of cloth masks in 19 other previous studies. And what they had found was that the effectiveness of filtration of cloth masks is generally lower than that of medical masks, and that's probably not a surprise. But of course, there's many factors to consider, as we've mentioned before, such as thread count, the number of layers, the type of fabric, and water resistance. Now, this study also suggests that cloth masks should be a last resort when medical masks and respirators are not available. Now, the general public can use cloth masks to protect against infectious spread in the community. And there can be two ways this can be used. First is it can be used if you are sick and you want to prevent the spread of infection. And then the second is you may use it if you're healthy to protect yourself from acquiring respiratory infections. All right, so what we're looking at here is a high-speed video that is capturing the droplets when somebody is saying the words, stay healthy. Now I have the sound muted. The link will be down below for you to, to watch this in its full. And as they're say, saying, stay healthy, Without a mask, you see these green particles and that's capturing the droplets. As soon as they go to put on a mask and they repeat this phrase three times in each case, the droplets disappear. So that's showing you just how effective the mask is in preventing the spread of droplets. So we definitely know that our masks are helping to prevent the spread of COVID and other respiratory illnesses. Now I'm also gonna include the link below in the description box that gives you direct access to the instructions on how to make your own cloth mask using the parameters that have been established in these studies. Until next time, make it a great day. Hey, I know you're probably not ready to get off your phone or go back to work just yet, or maybe even turn the lights off to go to sleep. So why don't you spend a little bit more time here watching another video?